This episode is brought to you by the Podcasting Year One ebook available now on Amazon. Take a journey with a novice podcaster as he learns the ins and outs of internet broadcasting during his first year. If you're new to internet broadcasting or you've been in the game for a while, please check out Podcasting Year One. Available by visiting www.anero.tv slash year one. That's Y-E-A-R-O-N-E. Welcome to the Ben on Beer Show for Friday, August 17. This is the fourth show. Yay. Four shows. Four. Four it shows. It used to be on Tuesdays, now it's on Fridays. I think I like Fridays better. I do like Fridays better. Because we get to drink earlier in the day. That's right. That's right. <laughs> this is a netcast about beer, brewing, the business, and the people. I'm your host, Ben Rayberg, and with me is Donovan Adkisson. Hello. Uh, the show is produced by Anero Media. Yes. Is that the whole name, Anero Media? Uh, yeah, Anero Media or the Anero Media Network. Okay. So, it's a network. It's a podcasting network. <laughs> there you go. It's produced by Anero Media. Produced by Anero Media. And broadcast on the Anero Media Network. Correct. Okay. Glad we got that clear. Yes, sir. Glad we did. So, what's the last beer you had? Uh, I am such a lush. It was... The last beer we had on the last show, <laughs> which was the Dale's Pale Ale. Dale's Pale Ale. So, uh, yes, I uh, I have not had anything since then. Well. Other than coffee. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, beer costs money. It does. Unless you make it. Or you have a friend who is a home brewer. There you go. Yeah, that's nice. Do I know anybody like that? Not yet. <laughs> I'm a I'm a bad beer show host because I don't have my brewery going yet. I know. You know, how can you talk about this stuff? Well, I used to have a home brewery and now hey, I don't. I used to be in charge of a cable facility. <laughs> now I'm not. <laughs> Nothing to do with getting drunk. Yeah. Wait, that's not what this show's about. <laughs> this show's about the Exploration and enjoyment, responsible uh, enjoyment of craft beer. Responsible. Why did you? Why did you have to mess it up like that and, and bring in responsibility? Really? We're adults. We have children. Mine are almost. Sometimes they ride in the car with us. Uh, okay. Mine are grown, except one. Do I need to go further into this? No. Okay. No, you're making me feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> the last beer I had. Which one was it? I don't know. I don't know, I, which, I don't know which one was last. That's I know. The problem. You've got. I, I mean, I, I keep seeing this steady stream of uh, tweets from Untapped. <laughs> you know, enjoying this one, enjoying that one. Yeah. Enjoy. I'm like, wow, he enjoys a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, I did have a Dale's Pale Ale yesterday, mm. and it was followed by a fat tire. I don't think I've had a fat tire. Have you not had fat tire? Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. Uh-uh. Dude, that's a staple out west. Do we live out west? I'm just saying it. It's a staple out west. I thought Staples was an office supply place. You're just wrong. Mm. I tried. Okay. <laughs> but no, I I have not had a fat a fat. T- I've had a flat tire, but not a fat tire. I think there is a, a knockoff, a kind of a copy called. Um, no, it's not called flat tire. <laughs> Wouldn't that be? There's funny? one called tire bite. And it's also an amber from a uh, flying dog. Not saying they copied it. I'm just putting it out there. Honestly, <laughs> I don't remember if I've had it. But um, We'll go back and look through your untapped. No, it, it certainly isn't an untapped. I'm, it's been a long time since I've had anything from flying dog. Mm. Okay. Last thing I had, I think it was, uh, oh no, Raging Bitch. It's the name of the beer. <laughs> Raging Bitch. Raging Bitch. It's hard to forget, actually. <laughs> um, that's I what I couldn't ha- tell you what style it was. It- no, man, that's what happens after you've been out all night and had too many <laughs> and you come back in. You meet up with the Raging Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and rightly hey, so. Hey. 
<laughs> not my wife. My <laughs> wife is wonderful and is sugar and spice all the time. <laughs> oh. Uh, but in this episode, um, we'll try to stay on topic, but every once in a while we get derailed. That's my fault. Well, I kind of do it on purpose. Sometimes. It's part of it. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. what makes the show a, a a length to listen to. Well, it's supposed to be entertaining, right? Otherwise, it would be about seven minutes. And <laughs> this is a beer. Mm, this was uh, made somewhere. Well, this stuff about glug, this glug. brewery and <laughs> glug, glug, glug. <laughs> yeah, this is good. And then I tell Let's you a little go. story, and then that would be up. Yeah. But we don't do that. No. We want something a little more entertaining. No, we're going to continue a little chat about Oscar Blues. Um, you said it right. I did. Oscar Blues. I've not had Blues. anything to ruin my palate <laughs> yet, so we'll see how it goes after that. Okay. Um, like I said last show on the 3rd. Yeah, it was the 3rd. Yep. I think that was a long time ago. It's already the 17th. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Oscar Blues was uh, kind of started in 97 as a restaurant, and then the founder, Dale, um, decided he wanted to brew beer there and, and uh, add beer to the menu and uh, open, open it up as a, or converted it to a brew pub. Um, and then not long after that, just a couple of years, he uh, started distributing the beer and uh, won some contests with uh, Dale's Pale Ale and... Um, they were the first, um, craft brewery to brew and can their beer. So that's, uh, really, really good stuff. They, um, but today I'm going to talk a little bit more. They have a, uh, spun off a bicycle company. What? It's a, it's a weird thing. You know, um, New Belgium is, has a, a bicycle theme and they have, uh, they, I think they have a tour, a bicycle tour that they put on, mm-hmm. and it may be m- multiple cities at once or, mm-hmm. or something like that, but it's called Tour de Fat, you know, the fat tire and all. Okay. Well, and I know I'm not talking about the Brewery of the Month, but the reason for the bicycle theme for New Belgium is uh, Jeff, one of, the, one of the founders, he um, he took a bicycle trip through Belgium, and it was on that trip that he concocted the recipe that is now fat tire is that the reason why he named it i mean the fat the, tire no 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 the uh the, the brewing company new belgium yeah, yeah. it's yeah. because he was going through belgium yep and that's i mean they, they had, interesting they had a home brewery in the basement and all that but yeah um, but that's where the bicycle theme comes from nice um and it just seems like uh the beer community also likes bicycling. bicycling i see um, a lot of that online like um well, running and bicycling. Running and bicycling, but I think um, even a bigger theme in the craft beer world is sustainability and um, ecological efficiency. Mm-hmm. So they're really green companies. They are we going to start hugging a tree now? If you have a, do you have a tree? <laughs> Not in here. <laughs> well, no, then I, I got to stay by the microphone. <laughs> but they do as much as they can for the environment because. Mm-hmm. Uh, a good environment produces good ingredients, and good ingredients make good beer. Good and beer, yes. I'm, yeah, so makes sense. Good beer is made by good companies who mm-hmm. who do good things for the environment. Wow. A good corporate yeah, I citizen. I just completed a circle. Wow. What, look, if you look at craft breweries, you will see some of the best companies in the world as far as who to work for and mm-hmm. what good they do. Mm-hmm. Well, that's cool. I mean, because most, well, I'm not going to get off on You're not going to see AT&T doing all that. (laughs) You don't see AT&T doing much of anything. (laughs) Other than, never mind, shut up, Donovan. All right, so Oscar Blues has spun off a a bicycle company. A couple of good things uh, about the bike company is they are designed and manufactured in Colorado. Oh, okay, cool. So, so American made. American made. Nice. So they have not only are they um, creating jobs with beer, but are are creating good jobs with uh, bicycles. Bicycles. 
I like they, bicycles. I will say they're not cheap. Um, so you really, really got to like them. The bikes? Yeah, in order to buy one. Yeah, what are we talking here? Four grand. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough one, huh? Did you say four grand? Yeah. That range, yeah. But it, in the world of bicycles, that's not... Okay, so this isn't your 125 to $150 Walmart You're not going to find it in Walmart. Okay. Well, well, where... The bikes in Walmart, where are they made? Mexico, <laughs> China, somewhere. There you go. Where are they designed? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Well, if it's like an Apple product, it's designed in the U.S. and, and how manufactured long, in China. And how long do they last? What's that? The Walmart bicycle. Uh, depends. But probably only about a year or two, there you go. depending. Yeah. I'm sure the Reeb, oh, sorry, the name of the bicycle company is, is Reeb. Reeb, yeah. R-E-E-B? Yep. What, do, does it stand for anything? Is it an acronym? It's beer spelled backwards. Why did I not see that? Honestly, I didn't either. Wow. I feel like an idiot. <laughs> I mean, I saw it in the show notes. I'm like, Reeb, oh, cool. what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, anybody see my dunce cap? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, but they are li- most likely made out of the highest quality components and materials. Titanium. So, well, I mean, yeah. Mm, where lightweight. Applicable. Yeah. Pick it up, spin it on your finger. Well, it's likely an aluminum frame. Yeah. But, but yeah. Um, Thanks, chat room. Yes, Reeb is a no-brainer. We got it. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that when uh, Oscar Blue's uh, marketing lady told me, I, I, it had not crossed my mind because I, I'd only seen the the bicycle name like once, and it mm-hmm. it didn't really it just didn't register. It didn't register that that was even a company owned by Oscar Blue's. So cool. It's eh, but it's neat. So we got a beer company that now owns a bicycle manufacturing yep, company, and the Oscar Blue's founder Dale Katechis, he. Uh, Used to go to North Carolina for some reason, mm-hmm. and he would keep a bicycle out there. So he's really into biking too, and that that really helps when the owner of the company is oh yeah big into something. Oh it, yeah, it's kind of a a natural occurrence that it it bleeds into the company, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which, which is cool, oh, especially yeah. when it's something like bicycling. Yeah, I agree. Not not when it's something like spending millions of dollars and. Having a bad habit of buying big houses. <laughs> we don't know anybody like that. I don't know personally. Know anybody? No, me L- either. Larry Ellison. Does mm-hmm. it. Yeah, he was good friends with Steve Jobs. They're not friends anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would be a little difficult to explain. <laughs> Oscar Blues also has a working farm out in uh, Lyons or or uh, Longmont. I'm not sure exactly where the farm is, but it's a uh, it's called the Hops and Heifers Farm, and it apparently is just down the road from Oscar Blue's Liquids and Solids restaurant. Is that the restaurant? Did, did we touch on that last time? We did, I yeah. think. Um, it's a 50-acre farm, and they raise their 100% uh, 100% Oscar Blue's raised mm-hmm. Black Angus cattle. So they are born and raised and slaughtered <laughs> right there. So they don't they don't bring them in, but they um, full circle. Yep, full circle. They um they get to graze on a big part of that fifty acres, and um, <clears throat> they also try to create a cycle between the brewery and the farm, mm-hmm. where the brewery's <clears throat> waste output becomes the input for the farm Mm -hmm. as much as possible and one example of that is the spent grains from the brewery go in to supplement the feed for the cows right um they also have a two acre hop yard with 3500 hop plants 3500 in two acres and these are the ones that i mean they renew Every year. Yep. They are a perennial plant, as we learned last uh, show. Mm-hmm. And they die all the way back to the ground, which is kind of a pain because every year, no matter what, no matter if you're planting new plants or the new ones are growing, you have to train it around that 
Mm -hmm. string every year. So it's not like it grows up and then it dies and it wakes up again. It dies all the way back and then grows out of the ground every year. Wow. Job every year. And a little bit of trivia, something you would never think to ask. Um, You wrap the hop around the the hop plant as Mm -hmm. it grows around the string. You wrap it clockwise. Why? I don't know. I would assume that's because of the natural tendency of that plant to grow in that spiral clockwise. Okay, but okay. If you, so if you wrap it the wrong way, it's just going to come off and grow the other way. Oh, so it, it has a ten, tendency itself to, to go that direction, apparently. Yeah, I, I'm, I feel like I'm getting into some territory where I should be some expert on hops, but <clears throat> not. Okay, well, but we'll, we'll back little, away little then. A little bit of trivia that I read, you know, <laughs> in, in research for my... For that article I put up, we'll uh, we'll just invite others to uh, go out and research that. How does hops? <laughs> why does hops grow in a? Did you say clockwise? Yeah, clockwise rotation. It works for me. And I I I forgot to put it in my notes, but I wanted to to uh, kind of list off the types the the varieties of hops they grow there. It's several different varieties. Mm. I'm not sure if I'm online. But anyways, I'll, if, I'll revisit that if that comes up. <laughs> and here it is. Um, yeah, but next, the next uh, episode of Ben on Beer, we're going to talk about the new location of the Oscar Blues. They have a, another brew pub, and uh, I'm not sure if it's a production brewery or not, mm-hmm. but it's another location, at least a restaurant, and um, with a brewery in it in Brevard, North Carolina, which, anyway, I'll, I'm going to stop there. I'll, I'll talk about it next next episode on the 31st, whatever, two Fridays from yeah, now. Yeah, it's whatever the last Friday of August. Yeah. There are three Fridays in August, so if you um, are lucky, there might be three paydays for you. Now... Interesting tidbit from the uh, chat room. Um, it says, FYI, if you grow your own hops, they should only be used for finishing hops unless you send the hops off to be tested for alpha acids. Yes. There is no way you can guarantee the content of alpha acids in the hops that you grow mm-hmm. um, simply because of your soil content. You know, if you don't have a farm, you're not looking at soil content and all that stuff. You're just planting them and watching them grow. Yeah. Um, so there's no guarantee as to the precise or at least uh, approximate percentage of alpha acids in there. So if you're using the amount of hops necessary um, by weight, I Mm -hmm. guess, for your homebrew, that still may not impart the correct amount of bitterness because you may have a different level of alpha acid in there uh, versus one that you buy from a farm or a store where that content is known. Gotcha. So... um, I mean, it, it, when you've got to have an exact recipe, buy your hops. Yeah. Or have them tested. I'm not sure what that costs, but... Um, yeah, the other thing was uh, alpha acids also can change depending on the time of year. So... Yeah, this, I guess the time of harvest would be... Yeah, yeah. yeah. And this is this is coming from the chat room. So, thank you, chat room. Well, thank you. We definitely enjoy having, yes. having uh, some engagement. But I don't know if it's the time of, well, I guess it would be the time of harvest because they're supposed to come out of the ground uh, in March mm-hmm. and be harvested towards the end of summer. So, yeah, again, I've never grown hops, so I don't have... Uh, but you were planning on trying yeah, to, right? I plan on ordering rhizomes um, this coming March. That's right. Okay. Cool. Uh, the hop yard menu includes Centennial, Columbus, Nugget, Chinook, Willamette, Mount Hood, Cascade, and Sterling. That's seven. Seven varieties of hops and two acres. I don't know how they... Wow. They mark some with red and some... And I guess they don't cross-pollinate or anything like that. No, you only use the female plant. If they do pollinate, then you'll... Apparently, you'll get seeds in there, Mm -hmm. and you don't want seeds in Mm -hmm. in your hop flower. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. they don't bother with the boys. (laughs) <laughs> I guess the <laughs> the dudes get no we respect. Just, we just want the girls. 
Isn't that the, always the way it is, man? Just always want the girls. <laughs> yep. The, the unpollinated. <laughs> the unpollinated girls. <laughs> oh, that just sounds so wrong. The unadulterated women. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, pristine. <laughs> the, uh, the male hot flower is still provide, pr- produces a cluster, but it doesn't have that same content. So, not sure why. <laughs> but we don't want them pollinated. Okay. From what I hear. Okay. Makes sense to me. Yeah. Oh, we are now to my favorite part of the show. And that is? The part where we crack a beer open. Oh, all right. I am running out of saliva. (laughs) Oh. And then we'll talk about this terrible experience that I had last time I was brewing. And for all you joggers out there listening to the podcast, get home. There we go. Yeah, you're actually letting me pour mine this time, which is scary. Yep. So you just pull the tab up. Yep. What? Sorry. Uh huh. Oh, I forgot to pour it in front of the camera. Oh well. Oh, I can smell that. Wow. That is. That is floral. Mm. I've I've have had this for two weeks, over two weeks now, and I've been waiting. So that you can see me taste this on the show. I know when you you, I've I've opened the door once to the refrigerator and looked, and I was like, oh. "That is a bouquet. That's all over the place. Wow." You know, I can say one thing though. There is a common aroma. In all of these beers that we have been taste testing so far. Even the Victory? There's always some kind of fruitiness to it. Well, they use lots of hops. I mean, we've had Headwaters Pale Ale. Yeah. Dale's Pale Ale. And yeah. this is a Deviant Dale's. Sorry, I didn't even introduce the beer. Yeah. This is Sipping on a Tall Boy. Deviant Dale's India Pale Ale from Oscar Blues Brewery. In one of my favorite states. In this here country. <laughs> I like that. That is a bouquet. That is not just one finishing hop. Mm. Wow. And again, if you use your own hops in your beer, it, it'd be fun because it's experimental. Mm-hmm. But you could turn out with something you'd really not rather drink. So yeah. if you are making it to toast somebody's wedding or, or for an occasion... Um, something that's not experimental. <laughs> um, you want to use your hops with known quantities of alpha acids. And they, I'm not sure they counted when they were making this. They just threw in the farm. That's okay. That's got a sweetness to it, but also uh, a floral character from the hops. Mm-hmm. And I'm not one of those, I've never met anybody with a nose to pick out what variety of hop it was. Right. That just, I'm not sure that can be done. Well, I I certainly wouldn't be one, but. Mm. It does smell good. I wonder if it says uh, what hops they use. Do, 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 deviant deals. This, I don't need to write anything down. It's all right here on the web. <laughs> ah. uh, thank you, Internet. It, it doesn't say anything specifically about the beer, that it, except that it won silver medal in the 2011 Great American Beer Festival. I could see why. In the American IPA category. Hmm. It says untold amounts of malt. That's that sweetness that we're getting. It's just heavy. This is probably going to weigh me down. I'm going to need a nap. I'm going to need a nap. (laughs) I have not tasted this yet, but it's heavy. I like that. I'm going to need a nap. Mm. Apparently this was uh, the first thing they ever put in a 16 ounce can. Cool. (laughs) Man, it's like one of the heaviest beers and they give you extra four ounces. Mm. <laughs> I'm, I'm just 
<laughs> we're not going to be able to get through the show. Mm, yeah, those <laughs> audio lovers are just going to be. <laughs> well, yeah, what the hell is going on? <laughs> if somebody has already stopped running <laughs> by now, they're listening to me. Going, Man, I want one of those, whatever he's got. <laughs> he can't even summon words for it. <laughs> he he just says, mm. <laughs> Well, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. We're wrapping up the show. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, this is. I can't. I couldn't tell you what was in here. I mean, <laughs> I. I wouldn't. Uh, maybe. Maybe there's chocolate chocolate nibs in there. Have you tasted it yet? No. You can't stop smelling it. Mm, that sweetness is like Christmas. Just taste the damn thing. It's Christmas. I'm trying to wait to get it all in here. This is supposed to be a sixteen ounce glass. <laughs> I had to <clears throat> I had to cheat. I can't tell it's chocolate and but not a lot. If there is any. I could be totally off, but Your palate is more discerning than mine for sure, so well, it's certainly better than it has been any other show because I didn't have a pre-show beer. Yeah, yeah. I, I learned my lesson last time. I now, according well. according to the chat room, Deviant Dales uses Columbus hops, and they provide the link in the uh, in the chat room. Columbus hops. Yeah. Hmm. Is that all though? That can't be all. I'm not even sure what Columbus hops is. Whether it's a. a a flavor hop or an aroma hop. I'm, mm, I'm not sure. I just know Cascade and Fuggle off the top of my head. But I know Cascade's a bittering hop and a Fuggle is a finishing hop. But Yeah, unfortunately, the uh, <clears throat> I think our, our chatter's got the link wrong because that actually goes to the bicycle website mm. if, if it was supposed to be a direct link. but Okay, it's time for me to... <laughs> Are you I was I was beginning to wonder. Mm. Mm. <laughs> All right. Never before have we gotten bogged down in the middle of the show because of the smell of the beer. Oh my god. That is heavy. Mhm. Mm it shocks you. Hmm. <clears throat> you get that sweetness from the just a tons of malt. That there's is like good. A, there's a loaf of bread in this glass. I mean, it's a heavy taste, but the the mouth feels all hoppy. Um. Of course, it's so bitter. This is an 85 IBU. Okay. Beer. Yeah, I was wondering. Um, and Dale's Pale Ale was what? Dale's Pale Ale is 65. Okay, so this has got more... Yeah, it definitely more does. More bitterness, yeah. 20 IBUs is... The difference between this and Dale's Pale Ale is greater than the IBU of Ice House. Was that a jab? I, sorry, it was the only one. The first one came to mind. <laughs> but this is... um, <clears throat> Wow, this is a... 8% alcohol by volume, and it's not the alcohol, but the, the, the combination of the alcohol and the sweet malt that gives it a kind of a liqueur taste to it, as you might imagine. But this is deviant. But <laughs> The, the, yeah, I don't have any more words than that. The, <laughs> that's the name of the... Of, <laughs> yeah, Deviant yeah. Dales. <laughs> oh, oh, it it is... Uh, oh, there we go. I told you it was... Uh, it is thick on the back of my floral. tongue. It said uh, aromas of citrus, grapefruit, rind, and piney resins with a copper ball of fire color and inscrutable finish. Yes, it crawls back down into the corners of my mouth and changes my speech. <laughs> yes, hopefully we can we can continue and finish the show. <laughs> mm. Instead of going, 
Mm. <laughs> you know what? If somebody tunes right into the middle of the show, they're going to wonder. Yeah, they what they the? hear you smacking and me going, mm. Yeah, this is not good. <clears throat> not good at all. Oh, so audio listeners, least, we, <laughs> watch the video, please. At least we're not in a political <laughs> debate and then somebody, you know, <sighs> somebody chops it up wrong. Yeah. Yeah. That would suck. <laughs> But here's what I think of politics. Mm. Beer. The answer to the world's problems is beer. And beer. But I'm willing to bet that we will not have a president who drinks beer <clears throat> if Romney is elected. What did Obama drink? A Bud Light, which is surprising because I figured he would like to drink an American beer. Yeah. Eh. Well. Mm. Eh. <laughs> hey. Well, he ordered a Bud Light on some one somewhere in the camp. And I, I, well, they had the beer summit after that whole incident with the. Uh, uh, I don't know what beer they had. Um. That. Yeah. In that case, but he was at one of his political stops in one of those states that starts with an I, and. He had a Bud Light in his hand. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I don't know if Romney drinks. Talking- Romney, Romney strikes me as the kind of guy, not that we want to get into a political rant, but he strikes me as the kind of guy that would drink scotch or some form of, of high whiskey. Whatever, as long as it's $3,400 a bottle. Yeah, yeah. No. I, yeah, $120 a, an would, ounce or something. Well, I would I mean. think his religion kind of gets in the way of any uh, alcohol consumption. Religion does not stop you from drinking alcohol. Well, he he's also in... Haven't you seen the Southern Baptist down there in the liquor store? I mean, come on. (laughs) All right. That's going the wrong way. This is not a political show. I Hallelujah, Amy. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) I don't mean anything negative by that. That's just the standard joke, you know. Just the standard joke. Where were we? I mean, the coolest, Um, hey, the coolest thing to me was... I was with the city manager one day coming back from, I can't remember exactly where it was we were coming back from, but it was late in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. And it was several of us, and we were in his vehicle, and he tells the driver, whoever, I think it was the assistant city manager it was driving, and as we were coming into Tifton, he points over and he says, pull over there. And so he pulls, you know, we pull in to the liquor store. <laughs> he walks he walks in and comes out with what I figure is about, you know, two half gallons or something. Hmm. And so that's when I that's when I was like, well, I know the city manager appreciates his drink. <laughs> I have to do a search here because as I was leaving work, I saw tweets that were mentioning the White House and a homebrew setup, and I gotta I gotta really want to find out about it because I don't want to wait two weeks to tell you. Mm. Um, how do you spell house? H O U S Homebrew. Um, <laughs> brew. And, and ladies and gentlemen, this guy's an instructor, okay? He's I'm tr- not the spelling teacher. <laughs> He's trying to... <laughs> and I have a beer in my hand. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, being, I'm being somewhat of an ass today. You're allowed. Makes the show interesting or cheesy. <laughs> or I'm not cheesy. sure which. <laughs> Listeners. We'll, we'll see. We gotta get we gotta get the numbers up. I mean, they're looking they're looking damn good, but uh, <laughs> you know, hmm. tell your friends, tell your neighbors. You want to learn about beer? Yeah, the president he's shown he's a fan of beer, and it's and it's the most politically expedient everyman <clears throat> beverage a candidate can drink. That's because it's generally beer. Cheap. Beer. It's what's for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with that. I like it. Except my wife won't let me have it for breakfast. But then the president told a man at Knoxville, Iowa's Coffee Connection Cafe, uh, that he travels with his own home brew and gave him a bottle to prove it. Obama. Uh, I'm, I'm, is that saying that President Obama is a home brewer? What? Are we going back to our founding fathers again? That's... We reported on Obama's, this is a story at NPR, 
venture into homebrewing last year. Wow, I miss that. When he served the White House's beer to guests celebrating St. Patrick's Day and, at an earlier event, watching the Super Bowl. That beer was a honey ale brewed using honey from the White House's beehive. The nice. man is in a new light today. <laughs> I mean, sure, that doesn't say anything about his abilities and blah, 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 blah. But. Yeah, true. <clears throat> everybody has their principles, and that is one of. He wasn't, he wasn't drinking his homebrew when he decided to push Obamacare. That's, what I, it, that's the problem. You really have to bring that up. <laughs> Nope, forget I said anything. <laughs> I'll drink to that. I am I am not going there. I don't read it. I don't pay attention to it. I try I hear I, I hear I this and that. It. I don't care. But the president brews his own beer. Does he really brew it or did somebody else do it for him? I can only assume. Mm. Well, it is kind of cool the fact that he will he he, he seems to like a home brew. Hey, you, so. that's a good quality in a person. Yeah. Yeah, I'm afraid Romney would probably... He, He's not know. a runner, though, is he? I don't Cause know. Because you always saw Clinton running and his Secret Service people... Clinton ran, Bush ran. The first Bush. I th well, it's both Bushes. Yeah, well, I don't remember. But, I mean, I remember Bush Sr., but I, I, know, I know W ran. Yeah. Clinton ran. Well, either way, it, I don't. I it, don't see Obama running. It's um, it's a point of character for me. It's, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm cool with that. But it, you know, if, I mean, if it doesn't run, whatever. Yeah. He drinks homebrew. I mean, even if he didn't make it, if he enjoys something that's that's crafted like this. Mm -hmm. But just remember, you it, didn't make that. The government did. And, I, and that's all I'll say on that. <laughs> that's the most ridiculous thing. <laughs> that, it, that it was put that way by the other side. Anyway, uh, what, what are we... T isn't this a beer show? Yep. Okay. You know me. I'm over here going, Get, let's go this way. Let's yeah. go this way. And, and yeah. Ben, you're over there going, damn it, we're talking about beer. Damn it, it's beer. It's beer. Okay. Yeah, if they wanted to hear that kind of stuff, they'd listen to those other people. How's that for not naming names? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those other people, not the ones that we're going to name. <laughs> um, I am going to segue into, yeah. not, not smoothly, though. Chat room's got a point. Never talk politics while drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> cheers. Yeah, cheers. Good point. Uh, so I'm going to talk about my... My last batch of beer. Now, I, I don't brew at home right now. I'm currently assessing my equipment and mm -hmm. waiting for more equipment so I can start the brewery again. Well, this time with a little bit better equipment and better methods. Right. So, well, you've learned some stuff. Oh, yeah. I've learned some stuff. You know, since I started doing the, the blog and the, and the show, you know, the, the show obviously has forced me to do a lot of research. <laughs> And not that I was completely unaware last time, but it just kind of made me think about exactly what I need to be doing. Mm -hmm. um, I also subscribe to Brew Your Own magazine. That's called Brew Your Own. You can't brew a magazine. <laughs> brew Your Own magazine. Wait a minute. Is, it, <clears throat> uh, they have, they is there have, a franchise for that? <laughs> <laughs> they have uh, lots and lots of good articles every month. Yeah. People still make magazines? Yeah. I thought everything was in ebook format. Well, I subscribe to Linux Journal and I cannot get that in print. So uh, there that's you go. one step. There you go. Um My last batch of beer was I think it was supposed to be a red ale. I'm not really certain. I don't I, and I should have. Supposed to have I been. I should have got my brewing journal out okay. and and found out exactly what it was supposed to be. But I think it was an Irish red. Mm. And um, little bit of history. I I used to have one child. Now I have two. It's the way it works when you have fun. Do you, Do you the, know what causes that? We figured it out. Okay, good. And we. 
It took me three to figure that we, out. We got it. Okay. Um. Anyway, we were we were and still in are in a three bedroom house. So, mm-hmm. with one kid, we had a spare room. Two kids, no spare room. So, uh, my my fermenting room was taken away. The office fermenting mm-hmm. room slash spare room slash storage. <laughs> was was <laughs> emptied out and painted and decorated and um wait a minute now what what about your priorities i mean come on now i had a talk with the wife and i, I lost oh that does so, happen <clears throat> usually when you talk with the wife it usually does end that way <laughs> love so you I, honey i yeah. had a i had a couple of batches after uh brayden's arrival mm-hmm. and but the last batch i i brewed after i call myself building a fermentation chamber mm-hmm. now what i did was i made a big box out of wood and i framed it up like a like a house mm-hmm. it had walls you know three and a half inches thick i sealed them i didn't put anything inside the was walls. it an a-frame house no oh it was a box okay <laughs> no shingles was, uh, the walls were sealed so they were basically sealed air chambers and mm-hmm. that's Pretty good insulation. Um, Did you pressure test it? No. Other questions. How'd you know it was sealed? I put my finger along all of the edges. <laughs> Go ahead. It's your fault. <laughs> this damn beer. <laughs> but anyway, okay. Where so was I? House. House. Yeah. My house? house? Yeah. Whose house? House. Some kind of beer house chamber thing. <laughs> I, I built it in such a way, I, I designed it on the fly, mm-hmm. and that's really bad in these kinds of projects. <laughs> but I had all the walls sealed. They were sealed air chambers. I had a an air conditioning unit mounted on the side, mm. and the whole side wall opened up to, to open the chamber. Mm-hmm. And around, <laughs> around that uh, opening was a... a, 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 a the kind of rubber seal you put around a door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was just, you know, smack it, and mm-hmm. and I, I guess I bungee corded it closed or something like that. And I had a uh, Johnson temperature controller wired onto the air conditioner. Mm-hmm. So I set the controller at sixty eight degrees, and once the air conditioner got down to sixty eight or around there, it cut the electricity off. Yep. No more. So. When it got, you know, to 70 or so, it would It'd kick it, kick back it on, on again. Mm-hmm. Just like you would a chest freezer. You'd mm-hmm. put this temperature control in a chest freezer, and it would do the same thing for you, except this one would be waterproof. My chamber was not. <laughs> now, I painted it. Was it outside? Oh, yeah. I oh. can't have it inside. <clears throat> I didn't know if maybe it was in a chamber. I didn't know if maybe you had a carport or something that was up under. No. In hindsight, I could have put it in a better place. Yeah. But I had what I had. Yeah. Uh, the thing started to collapse on the top. Um, I, I got one batch fermented. That was my last one mm-hmm. uh, because of all this happening. That, that <laughs> You know why it collapsed? It got wet. You didn't have any shingles. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a pitch on the roof. It was just a flat box. Well, there you go. See, I never have understood. Why do they build these office buildings with a flat roof? Well, they have uh, ways to drain the water off. And... Yeah, right. How many times have you seen school buildings actually leak? Many, many, many times. And then they're up there swabbing the deck, if you will, with all this silver or black crap. And Anyway. Were you the deck swabber at one time? Is this <laughs> no, I remember. Your past, your... Well, you know, what can I say? <laughs> I just remember back many years ago when I was in school that one of the buildings I was in, it was one of those flat roofs. Like mm-hmm. Roofs? Is it roofs or roofs? Roofs. Roofs. Anyway, and, and it, it, it always just boggled my mind that people would create a flat roof like that. It's like, how do you shed the water? When I lived in Albuquerque, we had a flat roof, and it, it leaked. And then we had to have it replaced with another flat roof. You should always have leak. A, You should always have a pitch. This was an adobe house. Oh, okay. <clears throat> it was really neat. Yeah. Well, next time you build your chamber, if you put it outside, you put a pitch on it and you put shingles. 
I will not. <laughs> okay. I will not build another one. Oh, okay. So you got another idea. <laughs> I'm going to buy a freezer like everybody else. Oh. You buy a chest freezer, a big chest freezer, mm-hmm. put the temperature control on, put your fermenter down in there. And go. Shut the door and and feel a little more confident than I was. Well, that I mean, well, you know, those things are, are pretty decent as far as uh, you can put them out on the deck, back porch, yeah. whatever. Yeah, so I'll put it somewhere, but... yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, this last batch of beer, I, I it fermented. Well, it stopped fermenting. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, around the two weeks or one week. <clears throat> yeah, after uh, seven to ten days, I, I I put it in the secondary, and then I another seven or ten days I bottled it. Mm-hmm. Well, I bottled it and then I put it back in the chamber to condition or whatever, because you know with the baby stuff in the room and the all the baby stuff in the fridge and, mm-hmm. you know, the house in a wreck. I think I vaguely remember any... some pictures of all of this at yeah, one time. They yeah, they were pictures. and Yeah. This, that should not be a testament of my building <laughs> skills, but I was in a rush. I wanted to get something done, and it just didn't work out. It's okay. It happens. But I, I opened this beer the first time, and it was fizzy like soda but not there was no head retention at all there was no foam that just sat there on the top and why would that be there was no lacing i i don't know how did it taste uh, like doo doo <laughs> <laughs> oh wow it, it tasted as <clears throat> if um the fermentation had not completed. Mm-hmm. It tasted like wart. Like, you know, you do your boil, mm-hmm. and then you cool it down, and you put in the fermenter. Right between that, that's kind of what it tasted like. It tasted like raw malt and and hop contents. There was no... Of course, you know, I, I didn't do gravity ratings before or after. Mm-hmm. I just stuck it in there and, and you know, blessed it and whatnot, and... and Right. Let it go. So, um, I did not, I don't think it, uh, it finished fermenting. Uh, but you said you left it in there two weeks? Yeah, well, a week or a little more, and okay. then I transferred it to a secondary fermenter. Right, okay. Um, and then another week or so. So, what I imagine is, I... I had never used liquid yeast, mm-hmm. um, and yeast in liquid form is basically a little more active uh, versus dry yeast. Um, I would always pitch a dry yeast packet. Mm-hmm. I would never um, start the yeast to going. I would just take it right out of the packet, directly onto the beer, and that was it. And that had worked in the past, but I think... Um, whatever I had done, my problem, I think, laid in the yeast or with sanitation. I'm not sure. We had a kid. We had right. a baby. Right. You had other priorities. Didn't exactly have a clean kitchen. Yeah. But it is what it is. Yeah. So my lessons that I learned from all of that is, one, you know, you can never be too... Uh, obsessive about sanitation mm-hmm. when you're brewing. Mm-hmm. That can ruin the whole badge. I know whenever you uh, initially went through all of the stages, <clears throat> I knew that you said there was a point in there you had to make sure nothing fell in it. Uh, I mean, yeah. and I honestly didn't realize that it was that critical. It is. At any point, you can introduce something to the beer like if you stick a finger in it, mm-hmm. whatever's under your fingernail has the chance to get in there and start consuming the beer and multiplying, and it's not yeast under your fingernail, I bet. <laughs> Probably No matter not. how clean you are, you, there are germs everywhere. So, mm-hmm. um, and, and I'm not saying that you're ever going to eliminate everything. You're never going to homebrew in a, in a sterile clean room, so... 
do what you can, mm, yeah. but do your best to sanitize everything that touches the beer right. when it is under 180 degrees. Gotcha. So, um, that, and I need to, uh, my new policy on brewing now is uh, to start the yeast production before I pitch it into the beer. That can be done through a yeast starter, mm-hmm. uh, which is a, I forget what they call it now. <laughs> it's a, I wasn't prepared for this part. It's a uh, basically some sort of glass vessel. Uh, a lot of people like to buy a yeast starting kit, and that is uh, some kind of, um, I won't say a beaker, but a um, a glass Um, scientific instrument. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's not a beaker, but it is some type of scientific <laughs> instrument. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm lost now. <clears throat> <laughs> Glass cookie jar? <laughs> Chat room. Chat room has some advice. Uh huh. Kick the whole family out of the house. They are always the biggest distraction when you're trying to <laughs> brew beer. And not only brew beer, but write a book. Yeah. Finish well, a lesson. Hey, watch a. That's the reason why. Night Rider. That's re- hey, Night Rider. Dun, 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 dun. Anyway, that's the reason why I get up early in the morning and try to write for three hours. So it's very quiet. Yeah. But anyway, <clears throat> I've been doing my best to get up at four thirty to work out. Four thirty in the morning. Yes. Are you freaking insane? No. I have young children, and we all have to be out of the house on the dot at 7 o'clock. That means showered, dressed, all of my stuff in the car, and, and all the kids put together and in the car at 7. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. Okay, well. If you want to send contributions to the help Ben out uh, so that he doesn't have to get up at 4.30 in the morning, <laughs> we'll have a PayPal link at the end of the show. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's a, it's called a flask. Ugh. But it's not the flask you keep in your jacket at the funeral. Yeah, it is, flask. Ah, uh, uh, What is the... Why didn't I think of that? Chat room, help me out. <laughs> it's got a name to it. It's named after a scientist. Damn it. I don't think that's his name. No, it is not. Some kind of flask. Anyway, it's a it's a glass glass flask. This, that's what happens whenever you drink during a show. I know this is a bad <laughs> bad idea to put a eight percent beer on the show. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> that's a bad <laughs> idea. Eight percent beer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I distinctly remember earlier. You couldn't get a word out because you were going, hmm. You know, it doesn't say what type of flask it is, but it's a, just a heat-resistant borosilicate glass flask. Anyways, you uh, a couple of days before brew day, you... Um, Hydro flask? No. No. It's, it's a name. Copper flask? No. Not an adjective, a name. <laughs> Google has failed me. You know, they sell them on Amazon. Decanter? You're going to make me look for this and, and not talk about yeast starters. So a couple of days. <clears throat> er, er, Erlenmeyer flask? Erlenmeyer, yeah. Erlen, oh, my That's wife a, My wife comes to the rescue. Awesome, chat yeah, because she's thing. not trying to talk and search at the same time. Well, on 8% alcohol, that's rather difficult, I understand. All right. So, hey, that was actually the fourth result in the uh, search. <laughs> I'm, I'm not kidding. You should have gone looking. one more. I know, because it was an article on homebrewtalk.com, not that we're trying to give them a plug, but I just happened to awesome say. Awesome forum, by the way. Is I it? will plug them, yeah. Really? Homebrewtalk.com has some of the best members. I have never been there. I guess I need to, I need to start checking it out. If you're a home brewer, it's really good. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I'm learning from you, and I mean, eventually, I want to try yeah. my own. Yeah. So, so a couple of days, like I said, a couple of days before 
uh, brew day, you want to start your yeast to get the best chance of a full attenuation in your beer. Uh, a yeast starter consists, consists of a um, little bit of malt extract, dry malt extract, uh, water, mm -hmm. and you, you boil the water uh, with the malt extract, and it's just a little bit of boil. You don't have to go ahead and do a 60-minute boil. You just get it boiled, get it completely dissolved, and you, um, you cool it or not and put it in the flask, but you cool it down to pitching temperature, and you pitch your yeast, um, preferably liquid yeast, into this bit of wort, which is, you know, water and dried malt extract is already, I mean, it's basically beer. Right. Without hops. Right. <clears throat> but it's the perfect environment for yeast to get started. And you, um, you aerate it every once in a while. You just pick it up and you kind of stir it up, mm -hmm. shake it up in there. Um, you can optionally get a, um, a stir plate which I haven't figured out exactly how it works, but I believe you put a magnet, a, a, an oblong magnet in the bottom of the flask, mm -hmm. and um, the stir plate uh, activates that under uh, under the thing and spins this piece of metal <clears throat> or magnet, whatever it is, spins that inside, and that will stir it and aerate the, the, um, the yeast starter. Mm -hmm. So Cool. You want to let that go for probably 24 hours before brew day. So mm -hmm. um, two days before brew day, you you smack your yeast pack, which I, I'm not sure why. It's just, you actually you, smack you it. smack it. They call it a smack pack. And that sounds like I some guess, form of s and I, <laughs> I guess it wakes up the yeast and gets it. Oh, what? <laughs> if we got to do it? something. Oh, well, I guess it's time to go to work. Yeah. I'm like you got to do that like twelve hours before you pitch it. So you smack it, and then you pitch it in your yeast starter, and then twenty four hours later you should have twenty times the number of yeast cells mm -hmm. in there than were in the yeast pack. So you've got lots and lots more cells, and they're active. They've been gnawing on the wow the malt extract so when you pitch that yeast mm -hmm. it's going to have a much more uh effect a, a greater effect sooner mm -hmm. and since it starts out as more yeast you're going to have uh, a full attenuation full fermentation mm. or as full as you can get so, right right um that i think was a, one of my downfalls because i never even smacked the dry pack so <laughs> you did smack. The I just pack. took it out of the fridge, pitched it, and put it in the fermentation chamber, which turned out to be a disaster. I still have the air conditioner, though. <laughs> I'm telling you, no <laughs> shingles. That's, that's what killed it. <laughs> oh. oh, we do have some news. Of course, Ben's going to kill me after the show. You and your damn shingles. Anyway, it's up to politics. <laughs> Okay, so what's the news? Why did you ask me while I was drinking? Do I need a? Do I need to start bringing in a sound sound clip? No. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I should pre-record the news. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can find somebody like. Wow, I'm drawing a blank now. What? Who? The dude who does the the news from afar for the South Geek show. Oh, Carl Ruckus. Carl, Carl T. Ruckus. Yeah, yeah. He, he might could do that. He might could. I don't, I don't know if he's going to have time. <sighs> he's kind of expensive, though. Oh, well, never mind. Yeah. I think I'll just pre-record it as a some weird hick voice. That'll work, won't it? It, it, it might, because it, <clears throat> I'm having negotiation issues with Carl right now. Oh. He knows I'm a little strapped for cash. Mm. So, But anyway, you, you, you have news. <laughs> <laughs> there is a uh, Belgian beer festival in Boston, as if I'm going. Um, no trip to Boston? <laughs> September 8 or 9, that is very unclear. The title of the email says September 9, the body of the email says the 8th. <clears throat> There's some kind of concert on the 7th hmm. that's already sold out, but... Okay, so is that, wait a minute, is that Boston or is it Boston? It's Boston. 
<laughs> That's right. You're originally from Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> it's Boston. It's not Boston because Boston is between Valdosta and Thomasville. Yeah, but we're, Georgia. This is the South. It's Boston. <laughs> <laughs> it's Boston, Mass. Yeah. So do you say coffee or do you go coffee? I say it like uh, Al Swearingen. Who the hell is that? You never saw Deadwood? I've got it, he but was, I, he yeah. was the the owner of the the he was the main one of the main characters. Uh, the only person I know from that I remember from there is is Timothy Oliphant because he plays in Justified. Was, oh, okay. Well, anyway, every morning, Swearingen would walk down the stairs. You'd hear clunk, 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 and he'd he in the morning he'd walk down and say coffee. <laughs> okay, and. uh Whoever, I forget his name at the bar, would would, would have coffee. Right? Would have coffee. Okay, so it's coffee. But then, you know, in the evening, he'd walk down and he'd say, whiskey. <laughs> I like a man who I knows for, what he wants. I forget the actor's name, but the character is Al Swearingen. And you can't beat it. He's, <laughs> he's awesome. Coffee. Coffee. <laughs> Beer. <laughs> uh, tickets are still available for that uh, Belgian Beer Fest in Boston. 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 Boston, Mass. Um, you can find more details at beeradvocate.com. As in the cost? I mean, is there a fee for the tickets? I, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Not sure how much. Okay. Not that we're going. But my email about the festival was from Beer Advocate. Okay. Cool. Uh, uh, more locally to us, anyway, the Macon Beer Festival. I think I talked about... No, I mentioned this on uh, maybe a tweet. I think you mentioned it. Yeah, you mentioned it on a tweet because I yeah. I responded back and I said, "Are we going?" But yeah, do they are they going to allow pictures? Are they going? Yeah, are yeah. they going to allow pictures? Because we're you yeah. know I was thinking of doing some video or pictures or something. But yeah, at least photos. That'd yeah. be nice. Um, I I still don't know if I'm going, but it appears that tickets are still available. They're seventeen fifty. Uh, the festival is downtown Macon. Uh, it looks to be something like a pub crawl. I don't think it's just a festival in one place, but it's a it's a pub crawl or something like that around downtown. Okay, Macon. for us for us ignorant folk, what's a pub crawl? You get drunk and you crawl to the next pub. Oh, hey, I love that. Or you know, you start out walking, of course, and then <laughs> you crawl to the last one. <laughs> so you must have a designated driver to get you wherever you're oh, going. Oh yeah, yeah. This at is the end. okay. Yeah. Okay. It's usually it's an event <clears throat> and it's supervised and. You know everything's good. Cool. You basically, go try beers at at mm -hmm. the local bars, but you don't you don't go get tanked at the first one. It's a tasting event. I don't know if it's anything like this. Oh yeah. <laughs> Usually your tasting's like four ounces. Okay, don't drink sixteen. Well, yeah. I haven't even had the sixteen yet, and this is kicking my ass. Yeah, I'm I'm about at the sixteen mark, and or sorry, the uh, twelve mark, and. <laughs> I'm warm. It's good stuff. <laughs> it's warm in here. Yeah, well, the air's on 68. I can't do any better than that, unless you want to start paying my light bill. I can't take off this beer jacket. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> um, yeah, tickets were, uh, there was a total of 500 tickets available at the beginning. Yep. Uh, it appears that tickets are still available. It's for $17.50, um, and if they are available the day of the festival, they are twenty dollars. Again, that's uh, August twenty-five from four to seven, and you can find uh, tickets at ovations three six five dot com. Cool. And more information about the festival at Macon dot com. Macon, that's Macon, Georgia. Yeah. Apparently, that's the Macon Telegraph, the paper. Sorry. And more news uh, about breweries. <laughs> Um, I guess while we're talking about Macon, I'll talk about the, there's a possible brewery headed to downtown Macon. No, possibly. Possibly. Now, nothing in the article said anything about their plans, their timeline, their approvals, the name of the brewery, or anything. I mean, what was it? Newsflash. Two possible guys, brewery coming to... <laughs> two guys, uh, Jim, Jeremy Knowles and Corey Smith, have plans to open a production brewery. Uh, sorry, a production facility, and bring a little more life to downtown Macon. They probably need it. It needs it badly. If it's like any of the small towns, 
if anybody's heard me talk about Macon, I haven't been there in a while. Last time I was, yeah, never mind. I don't even remember the last time I was there. I usually only went there for uh, the Macon Mall. Quite honestly, it was the first place I ever ate at a Ruby Tuesdays. You know, they have one in Tifton now. <laughs> you don't have to go so far anymore. <laughs> I I must say, I, I don't know where it is. <laughs> Uh, I just work here. Yeah, that look on my face was really. <laughs> I just said that. To be funny. Hmm, I have actually eaten at the one here twice, twice, and I think it's been here over six years. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> anyway, I was uh, when I was working for you, I was installing a cable modem in a gentleman's house, mm -hmm. and it was an older house, but he. Seemed like he had some money because he was wearing polo shirts and slacks during the day. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, and was he walking around with a scotch? No. Oh, okay. No, not that rich. Okay. Uh, he, at the end of the whole thing, I was like, I showed him, you know, everything's good. You're you're online. You're you're good to go. Mm -hmm. And he gave me Chick Fil A coupons. <laughs> to which I said, "There's a Chick Fil A in Tifton," and he goes. I spend a thousand dollars a month in advertising, and you don't know there's a Chick Fil A in Tifton. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Let me guess. He was the proprietor of the one here. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> <laughs> so, <sighs> oh, so God. I said, I uh, yeah, I'm your one percent. <laughs> I, I don't watch TV. I don't get out well don't worry i they, work for some piddly old cable company they got their name out there so anyway <clears throat> i didn't have any money yeah because <laughs> i was working for, for you for me <laughs> wow that was your first mistake uh, yeah. everybody's got to start somewhere <clears throat> yeah mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh um which is ironic yeah. you were working for me and now i'm not working <laughs> what the hell happened there <laughs> Wait, I'm working for you again. Mm. Mm. The Ben on Beer Show. We're working together now. <clears throat> You're not working for me. We're yeah. working together. This is a partnership. I guess I wouldn't have the show if you didn't produce it, yeah. and you wouldn't have the show if I didn't this babble. Is a, this is a 90-10 split, man. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Who's the 10? <laughs> uh, no, it's 50-50. It's 50-50 <laughs> is zero is still zero. Yep. yep. But uh, Oh, it's... I guess it's a good time to say we need a sponsor. Yeah, a sponsor would be nice. You know, <clears throat> we've got reasonable rates. <laughs> I don't have rates. Just send a check. <laughs> Whatever you feel like. Yeah. You know, you do it through PayPal, but just please don't do one cent, two cent deals. You know, people do that crap. They will, they will, they will do a donation or they'll send you a one to two cent. And you know PayPal eats that up, so basically oh, yeah. your net zero is or your your net is zero. <laughs> it's like you really? figured you'd probably owe PayPal two dollars for transferring the di the dime. Or I know. Whatever. It's like well, you got you you got ten cents transferred to you, but you owe us a buck fifty. <laughs> what? Anyway, Sweetwater Brewing uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. They make uh, anybody in the southeast is familiar with the Sweetwater Four Twenty. I wasn't actually, until a few years ago. Uh, actually, in Georgia and maybe some of South Carolina, they don't get very far out, but they might start to get pretty far out because they have just added 14 1,000-barrel fermenters to the tank farm. They, nice. um, If you want to go to their site, it's I think it's the latest entry in their blog right now. They um, apparently have added 28,000 kegs worth of fermenting space nice now so so every rotation that's a lot of kegs i'm not sure i mean I, i'm I, now that i think about this from from a person who maybe would own his own brewery mm -hmm. at one time that that kind of opens up a whole lot more responsibility if you're producing twenty eight thousand kegs worth more every brewing rotation mm -hmm. now that's like every couple of weeks where's it going you gotta buy more kegs you gotta buy more trucks 
you got to well, it's good market for the a whole lot more. It's good yeah, for the economy. It's great. Yeah. As long as you can sell it. Yeah. But since they don't um they don't pasteurize their beer. It's just in its natural form when it goes in the bottle. So it can't it doesn't have a very long shelf life. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. It you won't know. last 40 years like Bud Light. <laughs> it you know, it's best within about 3 to 4 months. <laughs> I love that. So it can't it can't go very far. Did you say 40 years? Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's a little joke. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <clears throat> it can't go very far if it's not selling yeah. very much. You yeah. Know, it, it, I mean, it, it, it could go pretty far. I mean, you could ship it to California because it's only, what, three days, four days? Right. But if it doesn't sell, it can't sit on the shelf for so, too long. Okay, well, what what would be the shelf life then? I mean, if you ship it out there, it takes three days. A a, uh, a a store owner gets it in there and he puts it on the shelf. What what do you got? Five days? Two no, weeks? No, no, no. You've got you've got a few months. A few okay. Three to four okay. months for a five to six percent beer. <clears throat> okay, so that means he needs to you know, he has to actually look at his volume as far as what goes out the door. So yeah. then he has to base his orders on that. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, as long as he's doing just in time ordering and there's well, a high demand <clears throat> for it. Again, that's hard to do yeah. when you're in Georgia and you've got to supply a, a distributor in Oregon. Yeah, but that's where you're you're requiring your distributors to basically give you estimates every quarter on how many do you yeah. think you're going to sell. And yeah. then you make them eat it. Cause, I mean, they got to <laughs> buy it from they they got to buy it from the producer, right? Don't they the buy The distributor it, has or, to get it from the manufacturer. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, money changes hands. Like if if we were if we were a brewery and mm-hmm. we're producing beer, all right, we sell it to a distributor. Once we sell it to that distributor, it it's done. It's up to that dis- distributor to get it out the door, right? I want to say yeah, but it probably does uh, depend on your relationship with that distributor. Mm. <coughs> yeah, they I probably mean, if, yeah. If yeah. they if you hose them one time with ten pallets that they didn't sell, yeah, they're not gonna buy yeah. again. So. Yeah. Yep, and that, we've got that damn three tier system. So yeah, but so you've got to market the beer in Oregon, all also. So mm-hmm. um, if you've got to get people to buy it out of the stores, so that the stores will buy it from the distributor, so the distributor will buy it from you, which right. is a horrible system. But the distributor has like the worst job because they have they are responsible for all of the taxes on the beer. Really? Yes, I didn't know that. That's what that layer was put in place for was for taxes and regulation that was it pretty much wow but it turns out they're you know they're hosed the budweiser and the 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 big three have have taken over so much the only thing that the coors and and uh, ab inbev and who's that other one miller Mm -hmm. have not done is get into distributing but they pretty much own <laughs> the yeah. distributorships, you know. Yep. When Johnson Distributing here in in Valdosta has Budweiser all the way across their truck, mm-hmm. what do you think? What do you think the percentage is of of craft beer inside that truck? Uh, I would. <clears throat> Budweiser zero. probably bought them the truck. I'd say zero. So I don't. I it, mean. <laughs> anyway, I'm getting off into another rant but uh they they're gonna <laughs> Sweetwater's going to produce an ass load of more beer every mm-hmm. year uh, i'm not sure what their turnaround is exactly i mean how long does it take to scrub down 14 1000 barrel ca- <laughs> fermenters <laughs> i don't know but you know they're they gonna rapidly Im- increase their production mm-hmm. of course they're not ready they've just been delivered and set up and they got to be cleaned and you know prepared and all oh, that good and of course stuff. they have to brew the beer to put in there <clears throat> of course so and we'll drink it yes if they send it yeah if they'll send it if they'll send the beer we'll make them brew of the month that's right that's right <laughs> we would almost i know i know you're a little more picky than i am but i'd say <coughs> you know anybody that sends free beer we'd almost almost entertain the idea Almost to entertain the idea. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's very few breweries that we would. Well, turn I mean, away. It, it, 
Yeah, I mean, if Budweiser said, hey, we want you to try this new... We'll give you $50,000 to put this on the show, and I'll be like, screw you guys. <laughs> and I'll be over here going, Ben, damn it, Ben. Just one show. Just one. Just <laughs> one show. Come on. <laughs> no, I guess for the money, I would do it one show, but I would give my honest opinion. Yeah. Well, that's... Hopefully, you know. You know, and they'd have to pay me 50 grand for my honest opinion of that <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> oh, Budweiser. I'm not help them market in. Budweiser, a.k.a. bullshit. But seriously, if they, if they somehow produce a decent beer. Oh, yeah. Whatever, sure. Yeah. If they produce something that tasted like this. They'd they'd have to sell it for like fifteen dollars a can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're probably right. Wow. Uh, uh, but Deviant Dales came in a four pack because you cannot pack that much alcohol <laughs> in one package. If so, it it didn't come in a six pack. Let, let me guess. There's a legal reason for that. There is. There's, okay. There's a limit on a per package kind of thing when it comes to beer. Mm. Okay. Cool. Uh as I understand it, mm-hmm. somebody could correct me. I'm welcome to corrections, but um, yeah, that, that's the reason it comes in a four pack. Cool. I like it. I really. <clears throat> it is. You're right. It's a heavy. It, it's it, heavy. It's heavy. It's uh, very alcoholic. <laughs> uh, but I finished mine. I win the drinking contest. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> You know, I still have to run the board, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nothing against it. Enjoy at your own pace. Um, is there any more news? There's no I, more think, news. I think that was it. You. Uh, <clears throat> oh, you know, I forgot to... Well, I didn't even tell you explicitly, Donovan. That, uh, there's a promotion going on. Well, not, a, not a promotion. Uh, uh, a drawing. I'm going to have a drawing for uh, plastic beer steins. I think I did. I, I did see something. I made a little post. Yeah. A uh, promotional company called me, and I uh, honestly forgot the name of the promotional company, but that's not important. They wanted the link from my site and whatever. So if you will send an email to steins at benonbeer.com with at least the text. 2012, you know, 2012, in the subject, mm-hmm. you you or your email address, anyway, will be entered to win the other set of 10 beer steins from this uh, promotional company. I can't tell you what they all look like. I They're supposed to send 10 of them to me. You haven't gotten them yet. I don't have them yet. Okay. The... Uh, but I said, I, you know, I want to talk about them at least. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to generate traffic for the site, and that's really all I want. I don't want your address and name and phone number. Nobody's going to call you. You're not going to get any s- silly emails or anything. I just want people, I want to know that people are watching or listening to the show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you'll, uh, if you'll send an email to Steins, S-T-E-I-N-S, at benonbeer.com, with at least the text 2012 in the the subject line, you'll be entered to win the set of 10 plastic beer mugs, which, from what I'm told, is a retail value of at least $30. Cool. Good luck selling them for $30. But, <laughs> and, uh, and how many steins do you get for 30 10. 10. That's what but I they're understand. plastic. They're plastic. They are promotional materials. They're... Yeah. You know, pencil cups or yeah, wh- whatever you want to use them for. Yeah, well, that's cool. I, I don't want to put them down, <clears throat> but I don't know wh- whose name's going to be on the cups. They didn't get a logo from us. Yeah. Hmm. So I don't know if they're just blank, or or what. But they are doing the promotion uh, for Oktoberfest. I'm I'm not really sure why, and they wanted to know if I knew of any Oktoberfest festivals. Um, and I told them about the one in Helen. Hmm. If anybody doesn't know about Helen, Georgia, it's a small town, but most of the architecture is modeled after an old town in in Germany. It's an it's basically it's a little old German town in the mountains of Georgia, and they celebrate Oktoberfest in September. 
<laughs> Not sure. They, they, maybe it's the, the maybe it's the time difference. No. We're only a few hours behind Germany. But they uh, Oktoberfest in September. Oktoberfest. Okay. Actually, there's festivals. There's there's a party it seems from September through October mm-hmm. in Helen. But the actual, according to Helen's website, it is uh, September something. Mm-hmm. Not really sure. Hey, if it's all about drinking beer, it's okay. <laughs> That's well, all it's I can all just say. about music and well, you and, know, fun you times. Know, they dress in the German fashion and. That seems like it's pretty cool. <laughs> I, I was up there one October, but I didn't. I, I went into a beer tent, and I think I paid money to get in, and and then the beer was flowing, but I I don't know. It just wasn't enjoyable to me. I just was I just it not taste enjoyable. All the beers, or did you, or do you just not remember? It, there was music and old people dancing. There were like busloads of of old people taking <clears throat> tours of Helen. Okay. Nothing against old people. Wow, I'm seeming to offend everyone. <laughs> but uh, that's my job. <laughs> yeah, send an email to Steins at beenonbeer dot com to be entered to win the plastic beer mugs. Hey, that works. That's uh. That's about it for the show, unless you have anything else. No, the only only thing I was going to mention is that we would really love to uh, have more people signing up for our mailing list, our narrow media mailing list. Okay. And even though if you're not a techie, one of the easiest ways to do that is to go to southgeek.me slash Xbox Gold. We're running a promotion on that show that if you sign up for the newsletter, through the end of August, then you're entered to win a one month free Xbox Live Gold subscription just for that, just for a month. So, uh, just trying to drum up some folks to to get on that newsletter, and because that newsletter is going to cover you know upcoming events that we may be doing on Ben on Beer, South Geek Rambling Review, and all the other shows that we're currently developing for the Narrow Media Network. So, I just figured I would. Throw right. that out there. Well, yeah. We can plug anything on the show. There you go. We talk about everything but beer sometimes, <laughs> so it really doesn't matter. Just throw uh, in some some pickled parrots and everything. Well, we can if you want to. <laughs> well, that's all we have for today. We're going to wrap it up. Uh, before we go, though, I want to... Remind my listeners to enjoy their beer responsibly. Use the Wheaton rule of law if you have any questions about being responsible. Also, don't share your beer with minors. It's just not right. Keep up with the show on beenonbeer.com and subscribe to the podcast with iTunes. Find everything you need to stay in touch at beenonbeer.com. See you next time, folks. Cheers. We've enjoyed it. Distorted.